Thompson Bowling Arena on the campus of the University of Tennessee. And this is NCAA Basketball on CBS, where today we've got a hot one for you out of the SEC as Florida takes on the Volunteers. And a look at the SEC East standing. The Gators and the Volunteers neck and neck. Everybody chasing Kentucky. Hi, everybody. I'm Gus Johnson, along with former All-America and national champion Greg Anthony. And welcome to Knoxville. Big game today for both these teams. And we highlight a freshman and a senior. And you talk about a freshman. Kenny Boyden has had an impact on the Florida Gators since the moment he stepped up. See Wayne Chisholm. It's all about the interior, folks. He's got to have a big game. He has an advantage on the inside. The Volunteers have to find him. Let's take a look at the AT&T in-game analysis. It's going to be very very important for Tennessee to defend the three-point line. I think Macklin and Tyus have to have an impact. Transition. Both teams need it. Who will win that battle? Volunteers have had success against the Gators. They've beaten them seven out of the last eight tries. Coming up, starting lineups. Opening tip right here on CBS. CBS Sports. Welcome back to Rocky Top. Rocky Top, Tennessee, one of the great traditions in college basketball. As the University of Tennessee Volunteers make their way to the floor through the stands. And they're ready to fight Billy Donovan's team, who comes in red hot. Gators have won four in a row, getting ready to start a two-game road trip. Let's take a look. At I like to call him the P.T. Barnum of college basketball. Bruce Pearl knows how to whip you in the spirit get you fired up he's in his fifth season and down a little bit in terms of scholarship players but his guys continuing to compete green cal george barrier official tennessee Florida, and we're underway from knoxville as the volunteers control the tip well this is the 116th meeting between these two schools tennessee holding a 68-48 advantage all time against Florida. They won the last meeting, 79-75 in Gainesville, March 1st of last year, and a turnover. Tennessee has won 10 of the last 13. And already Florida attacking the basket. But how about Irving Walker, folks? Keep it on him. We didn't talk much about him at the top, but conference play, 19 points, six assists, three to one assist to turnover ratio. He has been a difference maker on this basketball team since moving over to the point guard position after playing the two guard last year with Nick Calathis. Nick Calathis going to Greece, signed a three-year contract for a million dollars a year. Allows Macklin to run that point, pull up the shot. Scotty Hobson, they need him to shoot it well. He's their best three-point shooter in conference play. And he has shot it well ever since the suspension of Tyler Smith, which has been important. Remember, he's their most talented player. He has got to step up and play big. 48% from the field in conference play. Now Macklin, tough little Brooklyn guard, Brooklyn, New York. Clinton averages 15 a game inside, knocked away, picked up Macklin, batted around. Here comes Bobby Mays. Bobby Mays, really good off the dribble. Now Chisholm. Down the lane. Jam with the left hand. And if you're Billy Donovan, you cannot be happy about the fact Wayne Chisholm can catch it at the three, take two dribbles down the interior of the defense. Nobody steps over with the help. Chisholm. Also a very decent three-point shooter for his size. And they want to get him plenty of touches. Back to the power break. And it's Brent Chisholm got a hand up. And J.P. Prince the other way. It's important for Chisholm to get off to the start he has. The block shot there, the finish at the rim. And if you take a look at this on the replay, he shows in the ball with the pump face. Watch the lack of help. If you're Kenny Boyd, you got to step over, force the pass, or take the charge. Now Chisholm inside. Baseline, Mays. Bobby Mays has really been working on his jump shot. He was hitting it yesterday during practice eight out of ten times. So his confidence is there. Remember when we saw him last year against Memphis before practice? Yeah, he struggled a little bit with his confidence. He also had a problem with turnovers. He's definitely improved in all facets of his game this season. Everybody for this Tennessee team stepping up with the suspension. 
baseline, Tyus. That'll whistle. That'll go against Chisholm. So Tyler Smith, their best player, got in some trouble. And play. Tyus with the second free throw going down. Here come the Volunteers. 5-3, Mays. Chisholm working hard inside. Parsons got that deflection. So he catches it further away than he wanted to. Pulls up in the paint. Loose ball, Tyus, who's becoming a better rebound. He really is. He's playing in natural position now, which is power forward. Remember the last season, he was out of position, having to play center. And now with Macklin in the lineup, I think it allows him to play a far more free-flowing game. He averages seven rebounds a game as Macklin, the Georgetown transfer, lost it. Here's Mays again. And now Chandler Parsons, who hit the two big game-winning shots, fires a three. Count it. Big shot because Chandler Parsons, he's hit those two big game-winning three-pointers here earlier in the season for Florida against NC State. Uh, was one of them, and then he also knocked down the big one against South Carolina, but he's been struggling a bit in conference. And he comes up with the steal. And here he goes. Oh! And I tell you what, when he plays up to his potential, Florida becomes an elite basketball team, folks. They knocked off a very good Michigan State team earlier this season as well. And they were ranked second in the nation. That's right, and so that tells you the potential here. And Billy Donovan really likes this basketball team in terms of what they can do both inside and out. Chisholm, short on the baseline, jump shot. Parsons, another rebound, ties ahead of the field. Look at Chisholm, all the way back down the floor. Bobby Mays, Prince, he looked like he traveled. Pops it, short. And Tyus comes out with it. Boynton ahead of the field. Carson's rising fire. Tell you what, I really like watching Irving Walker run the point. He makes sure he gets his team's good looks. What a play, <laughs> Mr. May. Bobby Mays looks like Allen Iverson. He cut <laughs> off his, his braids. The and he's starting to play a little bit more like him this season. He's been very consistent for him. And, and Bruce Pearl, sir, it's one of the reasons why they are a much better team than they were a year ago. Nice rebound back. Takes it down. Yes. With the jam. Great. Nice internal passing by the bigs. Great energy early on by Florida on the road, folks. I mean, remember, this is still a relatively young team. Freshmen and sophomores starting in the backcourt, given a lot of responsibility, and they have really accepted the challenge. Tyus, another rebound. He's really cleaning the glass early. Very aggressive. Parsons off the bounce. Big Tyus, 24. Halfway now, popped out. Bobby Mays penetrates. Mays, and he throws it out of bounds. And Bo to start. It really is good energy. Both teams playing in the open floor. It's important that that continues really for both. And how about Alex Tyus? He's playing the power forward like the player he is. I do appreciate Bruce even having me have, have a blue shirt here. I appreciate him taking me that way. Last night, just a great night. Bruce Pearl recruited Billy Donovan to assist with the fundraiser for cancer. It's rare you get two coaches together with uh, the night before a big game. And today, both are wearing sneakers to support coaches versus cancer suits and sneakers and awareness, which promotes how healthy lifestyle choices can help decrease the risk of cancer. And I had a chance to attend the function last night. And, you know, these two gentlemen just are great coaches, great leaders of young men. And it was a terrific cause. Uh, and they raised over $60,000 uh, for coaches versus cancer. 10-7, Florida with the lead. 4-16, 14-16 rather to play here in the first half. SEC Greg is starting to really get hot. Some terrific coaches. Mark Fox in Georgia. Darren Moore, how about South Carolina beat Kentucky last night? Big win over Georgia on the base behind his corner, and he knocks down a jumper. Great execution by Florida. Now, you got Kenny Boynton at the point now. Irving Walker out of the game, but he's very comfortable in that role. Has really improved as the season's progressed. Woolridge, the son of the great Orlando Woolridge out of Notre Dame. Longtime NBA player. His son growing, maturing, improving a bunch. Watching a practice yesterday. His confidence is growing, Wilbur. 
Warner has had some problems with his shooting earlier. Ty is turned around, jump shot, in traffic, no, and going up top is Tatum. Can't hold on, and that would take it away. Point down the lane, the teardrop. Ty has again has scored the rebound. He can't hold on. Here comes Mays. He's got Hobson with him. I'll tell you one thing early on I'm noticing, Florida's quality of shots far better than what Tennessee is getting. Uh, Tennessee's taking a lot more contested shots, a lot more shots in traffic. Bruce Pearl can't be happy with that, but give credit to Florida. Their ability to execute here on the road, very impressive. Eric Murphy with the basket, fresh off the bench. Baseline, and that is nicely done by Hobson. So that's the execution offensively that we haven't seen a lot of from Tennessee here early on. Great pin down on that weak side. Hobson able to come off, catch and shoot clean for the jumper. 15-9. Boyd picks up his dribble. Murphy. 14 to shoot for Boyd. There's a pick and roll. Inside, Tyus again. As Boynton fouled the seam and put it right on it. And really, nice job, too, by Tyus to locate space on that pick and roll. A lot of times, guys roll into traffic. He found space, and Boynton with the nice delivery. Tyus now five points, four rebounds. Pops it off the bounce. And one. Just a step late there, Gus, on the step over and unable to draw the charge. Scotty Hops is starting to become much more aggressive in his second season. 11-15 to play in the first half. 17-11, Gators. For Bruce Pearl in this SEC. Also, when you look, we were talking yesterday. I mean, the games have been incredible. I watched up. Uh, Courtney Fortson have 35 in the second <laughs> half against Mississippi State this earlier this week. As Arkansas came up with a win. Mississippi State winning against LSU yesterday. And that Georgia-South Carolina game, just a terrific game yesterday. Unbelievable. It really, last year was more of an aberration for the SEC. Really a down year. We're seeing that with the Pac-10 this season. This is SEC basketball. Competitive parity throughout. Every game is a must win. Mark Fox doing a nice job in Georgia. He's got some athletes. They were right in that game yesterday. Goins now checks in, he gets his first opportunity to play. He's a point guard. Should be a very interesting matchup with Irving Walker. Florida now, Guster going to the zone. Now, talk to Billy Donovan. He wanted to mix it up. He hadn't played much zone here early on. And right off the bat, Tennessee's able to knock down the three with Cameron Tate. As Tatum. Another player that's really been working on his shot, according to Coach Pearl, they need to hit jump shots today. Yeah, they're going to have to, especially against that zone, as you saw in that last possession. And, and CBSSports.com is your destination for complete college basketball coverage. Four turnovers so far for the Volunteers and four for the Gators. As Chisholm inbounds on the baseline, Tatum breaks to the ball. And you see Tennessee, Gus, or I should say Florida, extending the pressure when Bobby Mays is not in the game. They want to try to just disrupt the rhythm of Tennessee, not allow them to get a feel or comfort zone with what they see defensively. Watch Skyler McBee. He's a walk-on, but can really shoot the basketball if he gets open. And they throw it out of bounds. As yes, my son is a walk-on player, but because of the suspensions, he's gotten a chance to really get out there, and he's rugged. And I'm really proud of what he's been able to do. He's a tremendous practice player, and you need those. And you have to have, we've talked about that many times, because really, you're only as good as your practice squad, your second team. Their ability to compete and push the starters. What a find by Mr. Walker on the interior there for Macklin. 19-14, under 10 to go. Tennessee, 6 of 14 from the field. Trying to move the ball around with that, working on that zone. And, and it's the, the effective zone, they, they did get up that three initially, but they got the turnover. And, and they've also taken that rhythm away. Tennessee was in attack mode early on. With BD. 
And they're doing Florida a very good job also controlling that backboard, being able to rebound with Tennessee. Inside, Parsons, nice pass for Warner. <laughs> what about the give and go? Parsler, Parsons, I should say, and Warner, beautiful penetration. A huge advantage when you got a swing player like Parsons who can take it off the backboard and really initiate transition. So Parsons with seven points and five rebounds already. He averages 10 per game and five rebounds. So he's already at his rebounding number. So how do you want to attack this zone, Greg? Well, you always want to get the ball into the teeth of the defense. You'd like to do it with some penetration, but then you got to have the good decision making there. Really tough shot there by Goins. Probably could have got a better opportunity for Tennessee. Warner off the dribble. Faces 15 footer. Florida very unselfish with the basketball. They are. This team, chemistry-wise, I think far improved from a year ago. There just seems to be a better understanding and appreciation of how they want to play. Tear it up. And there it is right there. Inside, out. You can get it in on the pass or the bounce, but to make the right decision, Wayne Chisabelle, the beautiful inside-out pass for the three in rhythm. And a turnover. Here come the volunteers. McBee. Nice job by Goins, looking for a shooter in transition. Baseline, Tatum, can he do it again? 21-17. It's a fast-paced game. And a reach it, Falcon. This is how you attack the zone, folks. Get it in, force that defense to drop, gets it out to Tatum in rhythm for the three. Tennessee trying to get back in the game. And welcome back to Knoxville, Tennessee, where the Florida Gators with a lead on the road 21 to 17 as you take a look at the game summary. Both teams have turned it over five times. Gus Johnson along with Greg Anthony. And so far, a fluid game, very unselfish play by both squads. Passing. The, the, the really, it's come down to the ability of both teams to pass. The versatility in both lineups really allows them to do so many things hard to defend when everybody has the ability to play for their teammates. Gators with the basketball. As Parsons serves as the inbounder. Florida with wins over Georgia, South Carolina, Arkansas. They turn it over again. Chisholm chases it down. Also, LSU during this four-game winning streak for the Gators. Mays the other way. As for Tennessee, they have lost two in a row at Alabama, 63-56. Excuse me, at Georgia, 78-63, inside. And Mackler chases it down. Vanderbilt beat him, 85-76 right here. Big wins this season for Tennessee. The most notable, that 76-68 win over Kansas. Ties again. Wow. He is aggressive today. Yeah, but the execution offensively, he got freed on a, a, a weak side baseline screen. There was nobody there for Tennessee to help, and then a beautiful finish. Hobbs and D. Maybe a little out of his range. Out of bounds. We'll stay right here. Tonight on 60 Minutes, Earl. Extra pass. Prince to the bucket. Got it. And the foul. And you know, I've been waiting for J.P. Prince. He and Parsons, very similar. They're like the glue guys for their teams. And take a look at this. Baseline screen. You don't see the screen, but he comes so free because of the great screen weak side. And then here, just a nice decision by Hobson to get it down to Prince, and then he's able to finish with contact. He's an important cog, I think, for Tennessee. They got to get him involved, not just scoring, folks, his rebounding, his defense, his ability to pass. He really does a lot of positive things on the floor. Prince is a much better player than his numbers indicate. He's averaging eight points and three rebounds, three assists a game. Boynton, force one up, and the rebound goes to Hobson. Hobson, a spectacular athlete, Prince again. Uh -oh. And set up again by Scotty Hobson with decision in the open floor. 
Marco, deep jump shot, and he shot that one from way beyond the three-point line. I tell you what, he's got a heart about the size of his height. And he is a great competitor. And a reach in five coming up. We'll take another look. Irving. You, you notice how he gets it up in rhythm. So he has an opportunity to get it to his teammate to make a scoring play. Close the defense there. Beautiful transition basketball by the volunteer. Irving Walker shooting on the season. 40% from the three-point line coming into this game. 46 of 116. He said he was having problems with his jump shot. He started watching some tape with Coach Donovan and figured out that he needed to take his jump shot and be a little bit more off balance. And it's really helped him. Chisholm. Carson, sixth rebound. Turns it over. Opsit with Macklin back. Opsit. No offensive. And that's the right call. Great play by Irving Walker because what he does, he, he set the the charge in time. He went, exactly. Once you pick the ball up, you basically committed. That allows a great defender then to be able to make that decision to step in and take the charge. Tyus again. And Tyus has just really been dominating inside nine points already for Alex Tyus on three of five shooting. As we approach the five-minute mark, seven-point game. Chisholm wants it. Macklin on his back. Now Chisholm posting, spinning. Loose. Point. Parsons ahead of the field, and he steps to the baseline out of bounds. Good slash is doing a very good job. And also, let's not forget the job Vernon Macklin is doing defensively on Wayne Chisholm. Only one of six on the interior. After that dunk he gave up, he's done a very good job of maintaining close position. Dumais going cold now. Walker. Almost traveled. The fans wanted to travel. He did travel, but the officials missed it. It happened. Got away with one there. Boynton roaming the baseline. And off Walker. Oh, wow. Not a very good shot. Please, Diagra pass. Hobson. Well, they, got, they got a mismatch here now with Chisholm. They did a very good job. Macklin recognizing the switching back. Chisholm again, across the lane, John Brook number. 3.43 to play, first half, 28-21, Florida, Tennessee, heading to the line. Welcome back, let's uh, check out our at and in-game analysis. Well, Tennessee, they, they haven't defended the three, and I look at the impact Macklin and Tyus are having, Macklin particularly defensively, transition about even, you expect more from both teams as the game progresses. 28-21, Florida with the lead. And don't forget, coming up on at and at the half, the bird is... That would put Macklin in a, in a position where he's not comfortable defensively. So let's look to see if they make the adjustment as the game progresses. Now Tennessee, they don't really want to press Florida, but they're picking up full court right now. And that's what Coach Pearl told us actually before the game today. He said their guards are very good with the ball. Yeah, but he's pressing now because you have far fewer offensive options in the game for Florida. Right now, it's just going to be Walker, basically, and Tyus. And that's when you want to go into attack mode because they don't have as much balance. Tatum, the long Hobson. He threw it a little too far behind yeah. him. But Hobson could have just laid that one. He, even though the pass, when the pass isn't right, then you don't maybe get the nasty slam. You just get the layup. He could have still finished that one if he had it just been a little bit more on the finesse side. Ball knocked away by Murphy, picked up. Chipman in the front court, straight to the bucket and lays it in. Yeah, Cameron Tatum, you can't compound the turnover. He threw the turnover and he just stood there. Instead of making the effort to get back in defensive transition and maybe avoid that layup. Now going. Steps into a jump shot. Hall, oh, the freshman with the rebound, and the possession arrow favors the Gators. 
And Gus, if you take a look on this play, you, the pass is bad, but if he just goes and lays that, just lay it in. Once, once you know that the pass is not where you need to make that slam, then just go ahead and lay the basketball in. That's more of an experience, and Tennessee has helped them with their four shot selection here early on. And you would know, you threw some great alley oop passes to Larry Johnson, Stacey Hoffman during your time at UNLV. Magic Johnson, another one of the great alley oop passes to Greg Kelsey from Michigan State, point inside. And to me, the greatest alley oop passer, Sherman Douglas from oh, yeah. Syracuse. Ahead, Hobson. And this time. He goes up strong. And a very nice play by Goins with the kick ahead. Impressive, especially after Florida had scored. 32-24. Tennessee unable to get major stops there. Point, 16 footer. Tell you what, this backcourt is scary. Yes, they are. <laughs> Florida has got a serious future. When you look at how both Boyd and Irving can play, they have the triple threats, folks. They can beat you off the pass, they can beat you off the bounce, and they can obviously score it on the perimeter. Hobson trying to create. Chisholm rebound and stick back. Maybe that'll get him going just to see the ball going. That's all. in the last almost game and a half. And for somebody that you count on heavily to score, obviously they need to get him going. Well knocked away. Great job by Pearl taking it away from Ty. Not a good pass by Boynton. Hobson, three. Rebound. Oh, man again. And how about the offensive rebounding here by Tennessee? Florida a little rattled now at the end of the first half. About a seven second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. Knocked away. Oh, the coach's son of the bucket. Oh, and he skipped out. Oh, that's a great hustle, though. What a play defensively. The quick hands. Coach's son. Making a great play in the pick and roll there. Unable to get the finish, but he does get possession back for Tennessee. And now you got a chance to go into the half with a little bit of momentum. Yesterday, talking to him in practice, he was great when he said that he had an opportunity to spend this quality time with his son. Steven with another year remaining. Already he has three steals in this game. Shot clock turned off. Game clock at 15 for Bobby Mays. Let's see who'll take the shot. They've been crashing the offensive boards very nicely. Prince, and he draws a foul. That one almost in. For the penalty, let's see if they can take advantage of it. Pearl throws it in the backcourt. Chisholm with six. Chisholm has to hurry. Four. Chisholm, three. 20 footer. Off the top of the backboard, and that'll do it. Wrong guy with the ball at the end of the half. Well, good defense by Florida to force that pass into the backcourt. Unfortunately, the wrong guy catching it in the backcourt. And that's the end of the first half with the score. The Gators, 34, and the Volunteers, 28. Now let's go to Iron Eagle in New York. All right, Gus, thanks very much. Coming up, AT&T. Prudential, growing and protecting your wealth. Let Prudential be your rock for retirement. Chevy and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. And by Viagra. Welcome back to Knoxville. Our score, 34 to 28, Florida with the lead. And moments ago, we captured a CBS Sports exclusive. Let's listen in to Bruce Pearl's coaches meeting. We're saying, hey, we can't just get in. Oh. <sighs> Got the ball, Scotty, on the ball screen. 12 up was good. 12 up was good. Two, two, two and a half. Yeah, but he's got to go through like he's a cutter. The second time, five minutes wide open. What's that? On On the 12 up? Yeah. yeah. Kenny was wide open because after Scott hit that shot, that good jumped out. Yeah. Never did. Yeah, that was first play. Deal. First play, man to man. We'll get to that. We'll get to that first play. We're all getting five. Uh, yeah, I suppose. 
Gus Johnson, Greg Anthony, you understand that. Uh, <laughs> that was another language we were listening to. What were they saying? Well, he, he was talking about specific plays, but I think really what they got to be focusing on is I, I'd, I'd be real happy if I'm Tennessee because Florida's shooting 57%. They're out-rebounding them. Tennessee's shooting 33, and they're down two possessions. So that tells you if the sense of urgency gets turned up, they still got a chance to get back in. But right now, Florida's playing great basketball. All right, with that in mind, let's take a look at the Ford first half stats. And, and if you take a look at this, the three-pointer is killing Tennessee. I think they've taken far too many, which means they have not had the ability to get the ball in consistently on the interior. You're plus four in turnovers, Tennessee, but you're minus eight in points. Again, Florida far more efficient, much better execution offensively. Tyus has done a great job. Bruce Pearl's got to figure out a way to get Chisholm going on the interior. And also, I think Scotty Hobson's got to have a little bit more impact offensively if you're Tennessee. Hobson, three of nine in the first half, six points. So the Volunteers with the basketball. Woolridge, Prince, Chisholm for three. That's execution right there. Set play coming out of halftime, getting Chisholm on the move, knocking down the three. And Chisholm with eight points to cut the lead to three. Parsons being harassed by Prince. Walker, 15-footer. And does not get the bounce. That one went all the way around. I tell you, Tennessee was very fortunate there. They didn't get an offensive basket interference. And J.P. Prince ball for an offensive foul. Charging is the call. Set is on a big, on a pin down. Big men are not accustomed to guarding the pin down. You're going to be able to create opportunities all night long if you're Tennessee. Bruce Pearl has been a winner since coming to the University of Tennessee. Really resurrected this basketball. Game. He's done an unbelievable job. You know, he's the perfect personality to bring basketball back to Tennessee because he is so energetic, so engaging as a person. Boynton, bowling pass inside. Ty is blocked by Woolridge. Here comes Mays. He has Hobson on the wing. Prince again. He's got it. There you go. Again, the, the nice little ball fake there to freeze Walker. Doesn't allow him to commit to take the charge. Great body control to get inside. Tennessee comes out with great energy right back in the game. One point game, Florida with the lead, 34-33. Couple of Boston College grads in attendance this afternoon. And there's Bill Donovan. The father of Billy Donovan to the left, and Bruce Pearl to the right. He's telling <laughs> John Travolta look on there with the butterfly collar That's right. and the afro. He had on his Swedish mitts. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. Florida has led by as many as 10 points in this game. Tennessee by three. Now the Volunteers reeling them in. And they're getting it done from the defensive side. Bobby Mays doing a nice job on Irvin Walker. Well, well, just take a look, folks. The way you defend, it's all about disrupting timing and spacing. Florida had great timing and spacing in that first half. Now the pressure of Tennessee is starting to intensify. Boynton, oh. off the mark, loose ball. Oh. Macklin inside, and he's fouled from behind. 3D, the Grammy Awards live tonight only, CBS. And as you mentioned, Mack really allowed this team to find its rhythm at 6'10. He's a true center. Allowed Tyus to move the power forward. Here's Tyus. Quiet lately. Got deep range. Tend to shoot. Macklin. Oh, no call. Yes. Offensive foul. He lowered his shoulder on Prince. And, and that's one of those plays, folks, that it doesn't come up in the stat sheet. Second foul on Macklin, but this is what the blue guys do. They make these kind of plays. It's about possessions. Again, you give your team, if you're JP Prince, another possession there. Good position by J.P. Prince. 35-33. 
So now Chisholm, Mays, Woolridge, Prince, and Hobson for Tennessee on the floor. Macklin, Parsons, Walker, Tyus, and Point for the Gators. Chisholm posting. Nice position, but Mays throws it out of bounds. Yeah, he had to duck it in. He got to deliver that pass on the money. Nine turnovers for Tennessee. Walker with the step, the runner, and banks it in. That's right, he is just so under control. Five points for Walker. Hayes posting. Short. Back it around, gets it back. Woolridge takes a three. Prince there for the rebound, put back. He went over Walker. And that's one of those. You get cross-matched when you give up those loose balls or offensive rebounds, and that allows J.P. Prince to win that battle every time on the backboard. Walker three, short, loose, Macklin, new shot clock. Walker reloads. Parsons. So there is Tyus working hard on the glass once again. Effort. You're getting great effort on the interior from the front line of Florida. They are really dominating the backboard. Prince winds up for three. And Tyus going up high. Man, has he been a glass eater, boy. Diagonal pass, Hobson with Prince. Hobson left hand, no! Prince with the rebound. Power Jordan takes it in. We have some athletes here We today. sure do, and that play happens because of the kick ahead. When you push the ball with the pass, it allows guys to get into attack mode. Even though he doesn't make the layup, it creates offensive rebounding opportunity. Prince with 10, he averages seven. Tennessee refusing to go away. Macklin draws a double. Almost lost it, out of bounds. It will stay right here. Two-point game will return to Knoxville after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching CBS Sports, the exclusive home of the men's NCAA basketball championship. Survivors are back. Heroes versus villains. Premier CBS Thursday, February 11th. I don't even know why you hang out with those girls. Well, they're my friends. All they do is pick on each other and talk behind your back. Back for your wallet. Cricket. A chance to win $100 of free groceries starting Monday. Super Sunday, CBS Sports is your home. That is going to be one to watch. I can't wait to see this oh, one. Oh, me neither. These are the two best quarterbacks in the league this year. Not necessarily in terms of their careers, but this year I thought they were the two that performed the best, fitting that they're going to be playing in Super Bowl. And I will be there <laughs> in person. And it should be an exceptional game. Peyton Manning, the four-time MVP, played his college ball right here in Knoxville for the Volunteers. I'm sure he's probably at home watching this game now in between film stuff. They love him here in Knoxville. Shot clock down to two, Walker. And Chisholm with the rebound. And Chisholm bumped, so he calls a timeout. 15.03 to play, second half, two-point game. Back to Rocky Top right after this. Now being applied by the Gators. And in the game, Goins off the bench, runs a point. Bobby Mays will take a break. Florida gets back into that 2-3 zone. We talked about this in the first half. Remember, this is a lineup from Tennessee's standpoint. They don't have a lot of offensive firepower, so good decision to go to the zone. Chisholm spinning and winning. But poor execution. You cannot allow the one focal point offensively, Wayne Chisholm, to get the ball inside the paint. And that ties the game up at 39. Wayne Chisholm with 10 points. Walker loses an edge and a foul. Ooh, tough one there. Looked like Walker just lost his step, but you take a look and look at him able to catch it on the interior there. Just nobody there. He's the one guy you're focusing on in this set. Take a look at right here. He cuts a beautiful feed there too. 
by that man again, J.P. Prince. His ability at 6'8 to find over the top of the zone. And Chisholm with a beautiful finish with the left. Bowens picks up his second. And Gus, that call, it's supposed to be automatic. Anytime there's a trip, intentional or not, the officials are instructed to call the foul. That time, though, I don't know that there was. I think he just lost his footing. And the official oftentimes will assume that there was a trip. Boynton. Inside, nice catch. Murphy blocked by Prince and a foul. And that will send Murphy to the line <laughs> to shoot two. And you see, you know what? The, fall, the foul's not necessarily up top. You see the blocks clean up top, but a lot of times you're looking at the contact below. You take a look at here. You see how he just lost his footing there as he's trying to turn the corner. You're always ducking that shoulder, trying to get lower than, your, than the defender. And again, Nine. Murphy, one of the bigs that will come off the bench. This is the second one-point game. Florida back in that zone. Kenny Hall has come in the game. Very talented freshman. He's got great size for Tennessee. Where's number 20? He's on the box. Goins leaves his feet. Prince inside. No. Batted around. Squirts out. McBee, the runner. As the shot clock expires. Numbers don't always tell. So Tyus has done it both offensively and defensively. Macklin's done a decent job on Chisholm. Chisholm now, I think, second half starting to get going. Folks. He's one of six to start the game. He's made three of his last four. Now Prince comes out of the game. And replaced by Tatum. These two coaches do such a great job of putting their teams in positions to succeed. They recognize personnel. Billy Dunham has done a great job defensively in knowing who Tennessee has in the game, making sure they're in the right defense to attack the weakness of Tennessee. Macklin throwing that ball away. Warner just couldn't handle it. 13 turnovers for Florida. As we close in on 13 minutes remaining. McBee looking for his shot. Will slide in the corner and try to get lost. He's got the green light inside. Hall. 12 to shoot. Goins, top of the key. Out of bounds. And you know what? That's as good as a turnover. He's going to get the block. Wayne Chisholm, you know, he got off to a slow start. What does Bruce Pearl do? He gets him on the go, gets that three to go, uncontested in rhythm. Did a beautiful spin with the left and the finish against the zone. Excellent Ball. execution. Inside, and he draws the five. And we'll go to the line. And that's a bonus for Tennessee. Team starting next year. And I tell you, if you're a Tennessee basketball fan, you've got to be excited about the class they're bringing in. Trey Golden from Georgia, along with Jordan McRae. And then how about Tobias Harris, 6'8", 210, out of New York, upstate New York. This young man, folks, rated number five in the country in terms of coming out of high school. He is going to make an immediate impact for the Volunteers. 6'8", 210, baseline, Shipman fires. Air ball, all with a rebound. Goins. In the corner, McBee finally. <laughs> you talked about guard play, and I tell you what, Goins has made a huge difference with his decision making out on the floor. He's playing for his teammates, folks, creating opportunities. Tennessee executing well here offensively. Goins with the steal. He's got McBee trailing him. Watch McBee, he's on the baseline. Inside, Hall, oh, no, but a foul. 11.47 to play, second half. Volunteers have taken the lead up by a deuce. Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be. Welcome back, and 42 to 40, Tennessee with the lead. Don't forget, coming up next, the PGA Tour on CBS takes you to For everybody out there listening that is going to have a chance to play golf with Greg Anthony. He is not a seven, he's a four. <laughs> so don't let him do it to you. 
He is a four. And Hall missing the first. Let's take a look at the SEC standings. And, and folks, this is such a big game. Kentucky on top. Remember, they knocked off Brent Vanderbilt, who had played so well coming into that game, winning 10 straight. And this game, though, is huge from Tennessee's standpoint. They have such a tough stretch coming up. They got still got to go to Vanderbilt. They have Kentucky twice, South Carolina. So they really need this game. Not to say Florida doesn't, but they got to go out on the road for some tough competition in the SEC. Kentucky is a scary team. They had almost 50 points in the first half yesterday against Vanderbilt. Walker off the mark. Tatum. Pearl is checked in. He had three steals in the first half. Bobby Mays is back in the game. Goins doing a nice job for Tennessee. Spelling Mays. Here's that zone. Mays is a very good dribble penetrator. Okay, Penny Hall's working hard down on that block. They're not getting it to him. Mays takes the three. And a whistle and foul. We'll head the other way. Warner deck. He definitely had position established. First foul for Hall. Three-point lead for Tennessee after trailing by 10. The last time they led the game, the score was 5-3. to three. Walker, baseline, Boyd. Too strong. Tatum going up high. He'll rake it and take it. Tatum, the lob! Thompson! <laughs> Elevator man! A little better delivery on the lob that time. Walker kicks it, 16-footer, Tyus, and it's pure. Oh, that's a big shot, because Florida really was starting to reel offensively, had not gotten the same kind of looks here in this second half, in part because of the intensity defensively by Tennessee. I'm so impressed with Tyus' game. Under control all the time, aggressive rebounder on both ends. Pearl down the lane, left enough. Parsons with a rebound. He's got Walker. Gives it back. Dumps it down. Boy, rejected by the freshman Hall. And a steal. The fourth for Pearl. Tennessee with numbers. And you know what? That play happens because Boyden took that dribble. If he goes straight up, it doesn't get blocked. But here, beautiful delivery by Tatum. Allows Scotty Hobson to decide what he wants to do with it. What an advantage to offensively. Again, when you can get it, when you can get the grab and then push it in transition and then also come up with the find. Pearl with four steals in this game. Tatum, baseline. And he traveled. Carrying the back. Comes up with the turnover. John Cal making that call 45 42. Tennessee. Boynton has been very quiet offensively. Parsons curling down the lane and a reach and foul coming up. Tomorrow on CBS, Charlie's brother turns tough guy on an all new episode. First foul called on Pearl. Parsons has seven points. He averages inside Tyus and a foul. He averages 15. And Tyus of nine shooting. Well, we, we got the Super Bowl coming up next week. And, and Tyus is like a tight end. And it, by that, I mean, he also does a great job of finding spots, spaces on the floor that give him... Now coming back into the game, a player that you really like, Goins. Yeah, a lot of times, people, there are two types of players. You have basketball talents, guys that can do everything out of court, and you have basketball players, guys who play within themselves and play to their strength. Goins is one of those type of players. He just does a good job uh, with his decision-making. And you'll see at times, Tennessee, I think offensively, even more efficient because he gets other guys' looks. His timing is impeccable in terms of the delivery of the pass. Had the highest GPA of any scholarship team member during the fall, Chisholm jump book. Batted around Macklin, who just checked in for Tyus, comes up with the rebound. Pick and roll, Walker. Kicks it, Boynton, wide open. Knocked out of bounds, we'll head the other way. Tuesday on CBS, NCIS is... You know, Gus, I like the pick and roll action by Billy Donovan. I think it's going to be more effective when you get Tyus into the thing with Macklin, unlike Tyus, he doesn't always locate that open space for that delivery. Hobson takes his eyes off the ball, and Boynton takes it right away from him. Tennessee 
Up by a penny, 8.30 to go, second half. You know Florida can score points in bunches, and a reach and foul, either Chisholm or Goins on the baseline. Chisholm to pull off that steal against a guy like Walker. So that sends Walker to the line. He has five points, averaging 19 fouls. So from the 826 mark and on, Florida will shoot one and one and possibly get him to the double bonus. Florida with only 14 fouls. Well, part of the, the, the problem for Tennessee as they've upped the ante from an intensity standpoint, they've also committed far more fouls. Remember the first half, neither team got into the bonus. And you're right, we're gonna keep an eye on those free throws. Only five by Florida. And three for Tennessee in that first half. Hobson, baseline jump shot. Too strong, Chisholm, offensive rebound. No, gets it again. No, out of bounds. Tennessee missing golden opportunities there. And there is some emotion in this gym tonight, and or it, this afternoon, folks. It sure is. And you know what? That's an example of a guy like Macklin. His ability to just be there, it forced Chisholm to really uh, speed up his delivery on those shots, and he's unable to convert because of it. Parsons. Guarded by Woolridge now. Woolridge really pressing him. Here's a high pick and roll. Parsons. Warner posted. And an offensive foul. Good job by J.P. Prince. Very good. Smart play by Prince again. Coming up with those plays that aren't in the stats that impact the game. Okay, let's take a look at the game summary by half. And you take a look at the job defensively on the backboard Tennessee's done in the second half. And also, they've gone away from shooting those threes. They've gotten more into attack mode, more points in the paint, also doing a better job of taking care of the basketball. How do you see the final 736 playing out? Well, it's going to come down from Florida's standpoint how Boyden and Irving are able to execute in the half court. Can they get opportunities for themselves and their teammates? And also for Tennessee, can you continue to get those points in the paint? Here's Walker. Tennessee as a team, 7 of 20 from the field in the second half. Florida, 3 of 15. So here we go. Goings, Woolridge, McBee back in the game for the Volunteers. Chisholm and Prince. Prince on the baseline. Goings sliding to the bucket. Chisholm with a rebound. No! Again! Macklin making him go quicker than he wants to. And Goins comes up with the board. They'll get a new shot clock. That's, those are the types of plays that there's no stat for, but the, again, presence. Macklin just being there speeds up Chisholm. He's not able to finish. And then the frustration starts to set in, Gus, and then you really start to rush. Chisholm, 4 of 14, inside, off his foot. Picked up, 10 to shoot. Goins, 7 to shoot. McBee will force it up. Either Shipman or Macklin knocking Chisholm to the floor. I tell you what, I think they're going to get Shipman. Chisholm may be struggling with his ability to knock shots down, but I tell you what, his effort is not lacking. He is just battling all over on the interior. 18 fouls against Tennessee, six now against the Gators. The kick, Mays back in the game off the bounce. No, Luke Prince with a rebound. Hey, how about the control? He was underneath the basket, had to reach back over and finish that layup. Tennessee reclaims the lead. Walker, baseline, jam. The slam dunk by Macklin from Irving Walker. And, and that's what we're talking about with Walker, his ability to create opportunities. When the pressure picks up defensively, that means you have to be able to beat people off the dribble and create opportunities for your teammates. Big B, yeah. You can't get him a crease. <laughs> He'll make you pay. He's out there for one reason, and he's delivering from beyond the three. McBee, the walk-on, averages eight points a game in conference play. 50 to 48. Point baseline. Oh, he lost it out of bounds. Boy, he is quick. Yes, he is. Oh, oh, oh. 
And you see here, he's almost too quick for himself there. And you know what, part of that too though, he saw Chisholm coming. And a lot of times, then he a little bit of indecision, doesn't know whether he wants to pull it or to attack the big. And Mays brings it into the front court. Prince. Tennessee worked on this zone almost their entire practice yesterday. McBee tried to bounce it inside, it's kicked. And what Coach Pearl was talking about, and you understand this more than me, he said, don't worry about penetrating the zone too early. Move the ball side to side. Absolutely. You, you always want the defense to go strong to weak. You want guys to have to think defensively, and then you'll find your spot a little later in the shot clock. Oh, it's been jump shot. He told me that he can't beat his dad in horse yet, the great Orlando Warriors. <laughs> but his father's 50, he won't play him in one-on-one -on -one anymore. <laughs> He's too old. Here's Walker, stop and start on the bounce baseline. Oh. Nice. That young man is a player. From bed Brooklyn, New York. 53-50. Under five to go. Florida has won four in a row. Tennessee has lost two in a row. Big game in the SEC East. Prince driving. Backlund blocks it. And Walker can't save it. And see, that's why Chisholm's struggling. Because Macklin does a great job of defending the rim. Look at him off balance and not allow him to extend. Ten to shoot. Mays. Seven to shoot. McBee down the lane. The deal. Chisholm. McBee set him up. And Florida wants to talk it over. You hit a couple of jump shots, things start opening up for you. The confidence comes after the three. Beautiful penetration off the pump fake. He finds Chisholm in rhythm for two. will help victims of the tragic earthquake in Haiti and other relief efforts. That number again is 90999. 55-50, Tennessee. They've defeated Florida seven out of the last eight times. Volunteers were down by 10 in this game and now hold on to a five-point lead. And their execution, they're starting to do a much better job of attacking that zone, Gus, here in the latter stages of this second half. Now they bring the ball up the floor and allow Parsons to initiate the offense. Baseline, Tyus, and one! You see that pick and roll. Bench, so that puts Boynton at the point. Great decision by the freshman to find Tyus. Tyus has 18 points and six rebounds on seven of 10 shooting. The lead is two. Four minutes to play. trying to buy some time for Chisholm on the bench. Knocked away by Macklin. Shipman ahead of the field. And he pulls it back wisely. Point. Florida can tie it with the two. And take the lead with a triple. You can feel the pressure now on both teams. Here's the freshman. McDonald's All-America. They just ran the same set as the last time, but Boyden didn't wait for that pick from Tyus. Parsons thought about it, five to go, lets it fly. And Woolwich with a rebound. That's just a little bit of experience. He'd have waited one more count, Boyden. He would have been able to get in that pick and roll. Baseline, Hall, blocked by Tyus. Hall gets it back, and we'll go to the line. Oh, you like the effort by Kenny Hall. Great defense, though, by Florida. They don't give up the layup. Make them earn it at the line. Iron Eagle rejoining you. All right, Bird, as we take a look at the game reset. By the way, after Turner, 19 points in that game. He missed six and since he returned to the game for Ohio State. That team is starting to really play well. Early on, I had him as the player of the year in the country before he had the back injury. Awesome talent. All right, we're counting down the top 10 tournament games of the last decade at NCAA March Madness on Demand. 
this week. So Kenny Hall, the freshman, going to the free throw line, 3.05 to play. Hall, one for four from the stripe this afternoon. He is a 67% free throw shooter. Yes, sir. One of five. And that last play, that's the reason why it's important to contest shots. You don't give up that layup. You force him to go to the line and earn those two points. Very good interior defense by Florida. And he misses both. And remember, folks, the little chips under each team's name represents timeouts. Two-point game, Tennessee. Parsons down the lane. And, oh, he goes down hard. Parsons already. And he misses the second. Tennessee has a very big lineup right now with Prince at the small forward, Woolridge and Chisholm down low. Chisholm with a double double. He hasn't shot a great percentage, but he has 12 points and 11 rebounds. It's 5 of 15. Mays, pick and roll. Hobson, 10 to shoot. Hobson, top of the key, dumps it down. Chisholm oh, with the left hand. And I was just about to say, Tennessee was confused. They thought Florida was in a zone. So they were running zone offense, and at the very end there, Chisholm recognizes Steps out for that pick and roll and able to find space and create with the left. They're on their feet here in Tennessee, under two minutes to go. 57 54. Parsons thinking about it, backs it up, and Florida calls a timeout. Wade Chisholm, though. The senior recognizes again, he gets the space. How about the finish with the left and the contact, Tennessee? Five, three. Tennessee with the lead, and let's reset it one more time for you. Well, how about the second half? How efficient both teams have been offensively, in particular Tennessee. But timeouts, Florida just won. Tennessee already in the double bonus. So if you're Florida, you want to be aggressive. A lot of time, minute 47 to go. There are going to be several possessions, so you don't want to get into a position where you have to settle offensively. And the Gators can't get it in bounds. Another timeout called by Billy the Kid, 147 to play. Back after this. 57-54. Florida burns their final timeout with a minute and 47 remaining in the game. That could be a huge play. Really good defense out of the timeout by Tennessee. They must have had an idea of exactly what Florida wanted to do. Able to deny the last few possessions. They've done the job on not allowing Walker to get the basketball. Not allowing him to initiate. Let's see if Florida can get the ball into his hands. And they do. Shot clock at 13. Parsons, eight to shoot now. Parsons, six to shoot, lets it fly. And he's far behind the three-point line. Oh, wow. wow. J.P. Prince. Wow. You don't foul jump shooters. That's what they tell you in grammar school. That's a tough call. Oh, with the body, he got him. And you know the problem with that, you got that rule of verticality. You have to allow that shooter to come back down. Good call by the official. Tough break for Tennessee. So Parsons makes the first. He has nine points. Fifty-seven, fifty-five. Tennessee, after trailing by as many as ten, holding on to a two-point lead. Chandler Parsons, who's been a hero for Florida this year, shooting three. And he misses two of the three. Two-point game. Huge possession coming up. Let's see now. Looks like Florida's going back to their man-to-man. -man. We want to see if Chisholm's going to get an opportunity on that low block. Chisholm with the double-double. 14 points, 11 rebounds, three assists. He wears number four white. Watson, he's rugged. Posting up now. Prince driving. Lost it out of bounds. 
That's a good call again. J.P. Prince has done some good things in this game, but he's done some bad things as well. He really he just fouled Parsons on the three, the possession prior. They got away with it, only gave him one free throw. And then on that possession, look for that kick in to Chisholm. No timeouts for Florida. Parsons, the run, oh! And we're tied at 57. Big basket. Under a minute to go. SEC East action. Everybody chasing Kentucky. Tennessee has lost two in a row. Florida has won four in a row. Chisholm, bang it, jump hook, and a foul. With 41.7 remaining. And Gus, that was the possession they wanted last time down the floor. You wanted to give Chisholm an opportunity to attack on that low block. Remember right now, late in game situations, you're gonna be less apt to go help because you don't want to give up the dagger from beyond the arc. And Chisholm, a very good foul shooter coming into this game. 50 of 62, 80, 1%. First one good. And the Volunteers take a one-point lead. So from a Florida perspective, with 41.7 to go, they'll get 35 on the shot clock. How do you want to attack? Do you want to go quickly? No, I think it all depends on this free throw in a lot of cases. You right now, down two, you don't, you want to create and extend the game, I should say. They're on their feet, everybody standing. Florida, out of timeouts. Two-point game, Parsons has been a hero for three. Oh! Yeah! He had it. Here come the Volunteers, they'll call a timeout. Parsons again. He did it against NC State. He did it against South Carolina. Will that be enough against Tennessee? Back after this. Just did. And you know what, they switched the pick and roll there, but Chisholm doesn't get out and take that three away, in part because the possession prior to that, he was able to turn the corner and get to the free throw line. I should say get to the rim and finish, and Florida's got to be excited right now. Par Parsons playing great basketball down the stretch. He scored the last six points for Florida. The Gators have not won in Knoxville since February 12th of 2005. Tennessee has beaten them seven out of the last eight tries as we reset it for you. Gators with no timeouts. Tennessee with two. Each team over the limit. So J.P. Prince will inbound it with Chisholm, Woolridge, Mays, and Hobson. Here's Chisholm. Hobson driving, steps back, lets it go. Wow! 16 seconds left. No timeouts, Florida. 61 60, nine seconds. Walker. Walker. Looking inside. Tires. Up down. Hobson with the rebound. And Tennessee does it again. What a game! Yeah, 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 yeah. Tennessee ending Florida's four-game winning streak as Scotty Hobson knocks down the big-time jumper. And the Volunteers win it 61 to 60. And you know what? Florida came out in a zone on that possession. And Scotty Hobson, that's not necessarily the shot you would have drawn up out of a timeout. But the young man has hard and he's able to come through. And then no time on the, I should say, no time out for Florida. They get the pick and roll. You cannot be upset with the opportunity you get here. Tyus on the inside gets a great look, unable to convert. Macklin can't get that offensive rebound. So another look at the winning shot. Scotty Hobson backs up, step back, jump shot. All good. And the Tennessee bench, they'll take it. <laughs> so for Greg Anthony, this is Gus Johnson saying so long from Knoxville, where our final score is Tennessee 61, Florida 60. Coming up next, it's final round coverage of the Farmers Insurance Open from La Jolla, California. Huge win for the Volunteers. They do it again against the Gators. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports.
home of the NCAA championship.